special meeting uh, of council called by uh, mayor and the council. And uh, I, I just thought it would be useful to do a quick recap uh, and summary of the uh, state of uh, this uh, development application and the settlement discussions that have ensued. Uh, of course, this has a, a fairly lengthy history dating back to the submission uh, of the application in uh, May of 2018, and uh, the subsequent council didn't approve that, and it was appealed uh, to the LPAT. Uh, also, the issue of the ownership uh, of the... Sorry, point of uh, clarification. We have to do the reconsideration motion. All right. Sir, <laughs> okay. yeah. We're jumping a little bit. Yeah. Covered that. Reconsideration motion moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Vardy. Moved by Councillor Frake, second by Councillor Vardy. Resolved that the rules of procedures be suspended in regards to section 516, subsection A of bylaw 7 81 to govern the proceedings of council, local board, and committee meetings. Um, recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell. No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Frake? Yes. Councillor Cadwell? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Sharp? No. Councillor Sharp is a no. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Myself, uh, I'm a no. So that is carried. All right, and we need a mover and seconder for the second uh, resolution. Uh, I'll read it first before we have the mover and seconder, unless we have one. Resolved that the matter in regards to the settlement agreement, official plan and zoning amendment application for 21 and 23 Main Street East and 6 Doran Avenue laneway ownership be reconsidered. Mover and a seconder. Councillor Frake, Councillor Vardy. Yes. Yes. That's this yeah. one, right? Moved by Councillor Frank, second by Councillor Vardy. Resolved that the matter in regards to settlement agreement, official plan and zoning amendment application for 21 and 23 Main Street East and 6 Doran Avenue, laneway ownership be reconsidered. That's a recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell? No. Sorry, All right. Yes, it is. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Did you want to debate? Not yet. I want to give him the right to turn All right. Before I read the resolution, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, I have a question, Mayor Jordan. Uh, Councillor Bothwell. Uh, can, I thought that a reconsideration can only apply to something that is um, a living document that can be changed. And this uh, settlement agreement had a timeline on it that was a legal timeline with a deadline that expired August 31st. Uh, therefore, this agreement uh, is no longer a living document and up for uh, the ability to be changed or to be reconsidered. So I would just challenge that a reconsideration motion may be out of, out of place in the sense that um, I think it, it, it states that it can only be where a matter can, uh, can can be um, amended or changed or whatever. And my understanding is this is a legal document that has expired. Uh, Councillor Doherty, did you want to comment on that? 
Uh, Mayor Jordan, it, the uh, agreements do have uh, a terminal date uh, of August 31st, uh, but it's subject to um, a mutual agreement to extend, which was still open uh, to be able to do with regards to these agreements. Mayor Jordan, because um, the motion that was uh, carried at their last meeting was that the settlement agreement was uh, defeated. Uh, therefore, it is not a living document and uh, it, it's not open to amendment, is my understanding. Councillor Ritchie, you'd like to speak on that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I'm correct, the original motion stated to um, pursue the ownership of the laneway and enter into negotiations. What had happened was an offer of negotiations was brought forward, which we voted down. But if we go back, it's on the reconsideration would be on the original motion, which would then be to re enter into negotiations. <clears throat> Sorry, Mayor Jordan, I understand the motion to reconsider before us is with respect to the August. Uh, uh, 17th or 27th resolution that we directed legal counsel um, that uh, the agreement was defeated with that the, the entire wording of that um, agreement so we're going to that motion and that motion was was defeated um, so therefore the agreement itself has expired and is no longer relevant mayor jordan may i comment councillor vain uh, I would just like to uh, take the legal opinion of the lawyer, the trained uh, opinion, and uh, I will go with his opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Uh, anything further that you have to uh, add? Uh, John? No, I, I've, uh, no, I don't. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, with all due respect, uh, we entered into negotiations with an original motion. I believe that still stands. That was to, to put in motion to obtain ownership of the laneway and then enter into negotiations. So the enter in negotiations is still there. Uh, we had individuals who said they had brought their best Negotiations forward to us for a vote, which was turned down. And now here we are today. If we're reconsidering something, it would be reconsidering, re entering into negotiations. And then one of the first things that would have to happen if they're still looking at what was brought up, there would have to be, they, they, can, they can mutually then agree to extend the agreement that was already in place and we can look to improve it from there, whatever the, whatever the situation is. I don't, I don't know what the situation is. But again, I believe that it goes back to the original motion, which was to um, and pursue the ownership and enter into negotiations. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Uh, any further questions or comments from Council? Councillor Vardy? Uh, thank you. If the intent of today, if I understand it correctly, it was for um, uh, really Mr. DeSantis and his team to hear directly from counselors about what they thought was necessary for this building to go forward. So as such, is there any way that we can make this an information session and then uh, Mr. DeSantis can act however he wishes to act in future, if he wishes to come forward with a new proposal or um, do we have to get into a very technical debate about the motion? Um, because the, my understanding is the, the purpose of this, of, of today's meeting, which is why I supported it, was to um, give Mr. DeSantis the opportunity to hear directly from councillors and to be able to respond to that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vardy. I think... Uh, Councillor Frank, you'd like to comment on that? <clears throat> uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I certainly endorse what um, Councillor Vardy just uh, stated. Uh, I was hoping tonight that we would get the close the void between the council and and Mr. DeSantis, because up to now, there's been a number of teams and people negotiating for us, and I think tonight was, was exactly that, to to tell Mr. DeSantis what we're looking for, so he hears it firsthand, and we can somehow have an opportunity tonight to discuss it and see if we can narrow the gap and come together with something. I mean, that because I think we need this, we need to move forward somewhere here. Uh, you know, this, I remember going to the first meeting, uh, that open house that, Mr. DeSantis had back in 2018, and I was certainly against the, the development. Um, I just wanted to know that, you know, I don't think it's fair to say that everyone in this council is not against this development. Um, we're not anti-development, and we're not anti-Mr. DeSantis. We want something to go ahead in, this, in this, this place downtown. We do have some concerns on a number of things, uh, and I'm, hopefully that was the thing we would do tonight, is get down to those nuts and bolts that is holding this thing up, and hopefully try and move forward with it. Um, so I hope we will be able to do that. Uh, I, I had a whole bunch of notes here, but I, there's no point in going through this till we agree that this is the way we're gonna go forward tonight. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Frank. Uh, I think what this, what this motion here on the, on the um, table right now is to get uh, debate reconsidered to reconsider this motion. So I, I think uh, we can have further comments debating on whether the motion. Uh, so, Councillor Sharp, comments? Mm -hmm. um, so, what I understood tonight, um, not from the clerk or from uh, it's just from a little bird that told me DeSantis was coming here to hear what we would want changed in order to approve this. And um, what I hear from this reconsideration is that we're only considering, so, so I already voted this down. And, um, and, and my vote, like I stand by that. So, so I'm not going to vote for the same thing again, but differently, right? And uh, when we get to the um, what's at the the crux of this negotiation is the ownership of this laneway, right? And so, the way I understand it, and um, our legal counsel can can correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, at this point no one owns the laneway, and that, and that there's a an argument over whether we or or DeSantis own the laneway, and uh, that this agreement is for us to agree that that. Mr. DeSantis owns the laneway before going to the Superior Court, and and then the new. Point of order, Councilor Ritchie. Point of order. Um, we have to reconsider the matter, reconsider the motion before we get into any discussion. So I do believe that the, the motion should be to re-enter into negotiations because we shut, we turned down that offer. Sorry, Mayor. I have the floor. If you would, so please. I point of order because he's, he's not it's not contained. Uh, germane to the motion of reconsideration. No, Miss. Yeah, I, I think it it, it is because we need to to we need to vote on the reconsideration. So I think you're wrong, yes. Mayor Jordan. Just please give me one second to to explain myself. Um, so if we if we vote this down, if if this if we vote down this reconsideration, then then this deal is no and forever, right? Or not forever, but until the next term of council. And if we vote yes, then then the application is approved as is. Uh, so, clarification, I don't think that's correct. So, our previous main motion was to uh, enter to, into an agreement, which was defeated, right? The, the whole terms of it. So, if we want to bring, this is a motion to reconsider that. So, to put that back on the table to discuss it further, we need this main motion to, uh, this uh, subsidiary motion to pass as a motion yeah, to so reconsider. So, we're, we're considering this. So, so we're we... not considering any terms right now. We're just. Uh, only considering the reconsideration, whether to e even reconsider this matter or not. It's not a matter of okay. the terms or anything of that sort. We're not getting into specifics at all right now. Okay. Um, sorry, my mistake. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Uh, I think uh, 
We have the motion on the floor. Uh, we can certainly vote on it now. Uh, it's, it's a recorded vote. I'll read it again. Uh, moved by Councillor Frick, second by Councillor Vardy. Resolved that the matter in regards to settlement agreement, official plan and zoning amendment application for 21 and 23 Main Street East and 6 Duran Avenue, laneway ownership be reconsider reconsidered. Councillor Bothwell? No. Councillor Dunstall? Yes. Councillor Dunstall is a yes. Councillor Frank? Yes. Councillor Frank is a yes. Councillor Cadwell? Yes. Councillor Cadwell is a yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Councillor Ritchie is a yes. Councillor Sharp? Yes. Councillor Sharp is a yes. Councillor Vane? Yes. Councillor Vane is a yes. Councillor Vardy? Yes. Councillor Vardy is a yes, and myself am a yes. So uh, that is carried. Now we can open the floor to the question. Yes, I'll go. why don't I go through the agenda? Um, because I guess we'll have uh, legal uh, redo your opening uh, statement in uh, in the proper time, uh, and I'll go to I'll, I'll go to the order of agenda right now. Opening statement and recap summary from our legal. Open to council for questions, comments, clarification, etc. Then we'll have a recess. The recess will be called to prepare any response to questions, comments, and clarification. Then we have a response session. Uh, Legal and DeSantis team will respond to all questions, comments, and clarification. Council discussion, um, council position, second recess. DeSantis team response to position. Any re resolution motion put forward. So that's our order. Uh, so we'll start with uh, uh, John Doherty. Uh, welcome again for a second time. Thank you, and uh, I, I I won't repeat sort of the, uh, the, the prior notes, but uh, I'll, I'll simply try to uh, quickly summarize where uh, I think we're at, is that first of all, this uh, um, progressed uh, into the Superior Court as a result of the um, fact that the uh, registered owner of the laneway is not the town and uh, it's not uh, the DeSantis uh, entities, but it's uh, James Doran who died in 1912. And uh, so the ownership of the laneway is something that has been unresolved uh, for over a century. Um, in the fall of 2019, uh, both the town and DeSantis brought separate court applications to obtain ownership of uh, the laneway and the DeSantis uh, application was just with regards to a portion of the laneway that uh, runs between the two properties uh, that uh, uh, they own. So the, uh, while we're confident in our case in Superior Court, we did enter into negotiations and that included um, dealing with the potential for consent orders to be made by the Superior Court with regards to ownership of uh, the laneway, part to the town, part to DeSantis, uh, in order to enable uh, the development to proceed. And uh, in tandem with that were discussions related to the merits of the development application. Those negotiations have ensued over the past uh, uh, seven or eight months, and uh, we now have a situation where the proposed development complies with the zoning bylaw with respect to the uh, critical uh, part that had been discussed previously with regards to uh, parking requirements and uh, council has considered this uh, matter on a number of occasions and given some directions uh, with regards to further uh, matters that uh, should be pursued in negotiations and those uh, uh, negotiations were uh, productive and uh, were brought back before council uh, and on 
However, on August 27th, uh, Council uh, declined to approve uh, that uh, master settlement agreement. Um, the, there are a number of benefits to that settlement uh, um, document and uh, the related documents. The uh, town will uh, obtain ownership over the majority of the laneway without having to proceed further in a contested court application. Um, the maintenance of uh, the laneway uh, will become uh, uh, the improved laneway that will flow through the DeSantis property uh, out to Doran, uh, which will be an expanded and an improved laneway, uh, will be uh, uh, the responsibility ultimately of Century Condos. But public access will be maintained uh, throughout uh, that expanded and improved laneway out to Doran Avenue. The town obtains an easement for the laneway extension out to Dor Doran Avenue, and that extension will be built at the expense of DeSantis. The town, in addition, uh, receives a substantial contribution to its legal costs in the range of $100,000 uh, in connection with that Superior Court matter. And uh, the uh, have also been to date uh, responsive uh, uh, negotiations with regards to uh, requested changes to the development. So we're, uh, as you uh, are aware, of course, the DeSantis team are all here this evening to uh, respond to council questions, comments, and concerns, and to uh, hold further discussions with regards to those issues. And uh, I'm sure the council will be uh, sensitive to the, the fact that uh, there are continuing negotiations that are being contemplated here and uh, we'll uh, do so and discuss this in the public interest uh, based on the merits of uh, this application. But to try to move the matter forward, uh, it would be helpful if council uh, could provide staff and consultants with clear information and specifics about its intentions and wishes for this development that uh, might meet with uh, approval. I think that's my summary of where we sit today. Thank you. Thank you, John. Questions and comments from Council? Councilor Frey? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, as, as the mover of this suspend the rules and reconsideration, I, I th think maybe I should have my first, my two cents worth first. Uh, I, and I'm not sure where we want it, where this, what's the first part of this, this session is, are we now kind of verbalizing our, what we want from Mr. DeSantis? Yes, that's where we're at. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, all right. Anyways, uh, thank you for coming out and bringing your team. Um, I know there's been a lot of confusion around this particular development from for a long, long time, and um, and I know that uh, this is the first. You have to understand a few things. This is the first development that this town, this town council, has really had full responsibility to deal with. A lot of the previous ones were were dealt with the old council, so. I think it's safe to say that we want downtown, Mr. DeSantis, a signature building, a building that's really going to mean something, that's going to be really the best building in town practically, because it is our downtown. You, you, you can see yourself how much we've been trying to protect the downtown core. So, and you know, on behalf of our constituents, the merchants, and so on and so forth, we just want a landmark building down there. And we have a, a few concerns left. There's not a lot. Parking, obviously, is one of them. Uh, for me, for example, I like to see 
a maximum of 87 units. I think we've already agreed to something like that. I'd like to see one and a half parking spaces per unit. Uh, I hope you're taking notes. Uh, no tandem parking. I don't know where that came from, whose idea that was, but it was a, it was a lame idea in my eyes. Uh, we still would like to see a restaurant there uh, with ample parking for the restaurant. And the laneway, of course, is the legal thing that we'll, we'll have to deal with that at some point in time. They're not big asks, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn with anyone else in this room. There's site plan things which, which, which are important too, but we'll deal with those, I think, when the time comes, such as the cul-de-sac, the facade, the balconies and setbacks and so on and so forth. That's another, that's another discussion at another time. So those are my asks, and I don't, I'm not gonna, and these, I don't know if these are surprises to you or not, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how involved you were at, at the front line with these, with these negotiations and these, these discussions. Or was it you're just your team and our team and you were kind of left in the background? I don't know. But those are my th the things that I would like to see. And hopefully we can come to some kind of an agreement tonight. If we do, then maybe we can move this thing forward. So uh, anyway, that's, I'll leave it at that because I'm sure there's a lot of other folks in the room that have a few things they want to say and they won't be too much different, I'm sure, than what I'm saying. So anyways, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Frank. Councillor Dunstall. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and I want to first uh, make everybody realize I have came into the picture late, so I wasn't involved in some of the uh, earlier negotiations. I, I have a question about the laneway to, towards uh, John, uh, if I could, John Doherty, and, and that is that if I was hearing you correctly, we we can take ownership of this without having to go to the Supreme Court uh, at this point because uh, the lady that owned it died in 2012. Uh, sorry, 1912, not 2000, 1912. And so that we, we, we can take possession of, of that and then, is that what you were saying? If I could. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, the essence is that the parties would come to a consent agreement okay. and a consent order would be requested from the court that would declare that uh, portions of the laneway are owned respectively by the town and uh, also by DeSantis. And DeSantis would be under an obligation to provide for the uh, extension of the laneway through its development out to Doran Avenue. And the town would have an easement over that portion of the laneway so that the entirety of the laneway would be uh, a public laneway and uh, provide uh, expanded uh, laneway and uh, improve traffic flow. And so, so in future, if there was any question about ownership because maybe somebody tripped and fell on the laneway and uh, sued. Uh, there would be no question about who owned what portion. If that portion belonged to the town, then it would be the town's liability. And if it fell upon uh, uh, Mr. DeSantis, would, would it still be Mr. DeSantis or then would it be the condo corporation once the, uh, once the complex is built? He would not remain owner of that portion of the laneway, would he? Uh, I, I don't believe so. I believe ultimately uh, the uh, condo corporation would end up uh, um, being the owner, but uh, that's maybe a, uh, a question better answered by uh, DeSantis uh, representatives as to their uh, long-term ownership provision. But yes, the liability uh, issues would be covered off uh, respectively between the parties. That would own it. Yeah, I guess all I'm saying is that we won't get in, into muddy waters down the road, say five to ten years from now, because this uh, resolution for this laneway has not been done according to the the, the laws of the land or the courts. Uh, this is all going to work itself out, correct? The, that's correct. And okay. in terms of uh, uh, there's been. Uh, 
we've sought to find the heirs of James Doran, and uh, they have not uh, filed any appearance in the proceedings, and so the court uh, will uh, be in, in a position to be able to make the declarations that are contemplated in the consent orders. Uh, so in other words, we can proceed with the development without this uh, impeding it at this point in time. We can move forward if we decided uh, this evening to approve it. It could move ahead. We don't have to wait till the courts put their stamp of approval on it. They will do it anyhow and we can proceed. Is, is, is that my understanding? We would still need to obtain the formal uh, court orders, right. but that would right. be obtained on consent and uh, we anticipate that would be uh, forthcoming three to six months or something. Yes, yeah, something yeah. that. So it would period. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it would be worked out, and it would uh, it would dispose of any of the interest of the Dorian family yeah. in in doing so. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, concerning the actual development and what uh, uh, DeSantis Homes has proposed to us for this uh, century condo, I think what I've heard is that. Our planning department and an independent planner has said this is a good plan. And when we heard last meeting about the tandem parking, some of us uh, didn't like it. Uh, but if it's if it's acceptable and it's it meets uh, the requirements, I, I don't think we should involve our our personal opinions of it if it's. If somebody is going to buy a unit that has tandem parking that Mr. DeSantis wants to sell them, and they agree to it, uh, its uh, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, concerning the restaurant, I think that's something uh, we'd all like to see downtown because having more eateries is not a bad thing. That's a really good thing downtown. Uh, having uh, the number of units that he has proposed makes great sense for intensification downtown, to bring more residents to live downtown, to make it a walkable community. And what I'm hearing about parking in other municipalities, they're actually, if I'm not mistaken, reducing the requirements to get people to stop owning so many darn cars. We just got to get out of our our cars and start using other modes of transportation. And if we don't give it up, we're all going to be, uh, you know, in a gridlock. We we have we've got now we've got transportation on demand in our town. Uh, we want to have people living and working and playing in our town and not having to commute uh, 30, 40, 50 sometimes 100 kilometers away to work somewhere else. Let's try and build a community where we can support each other. And we definitely need some viability downtown. Our town is struggling right now. We've got empty shops. We're in the middle of a pandemic that we don't know when it's ever going to end. And we've got a gentleman here that wants to invest millions of dollars in our downtown. We cannot stall this any longer. It has to go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunstall. Councillor Sharp. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. And, um, so I'm referencing a document here from KNYMH, and I wonder, through the clerk, if you could just give this to uh, Mr. DeSantis and his planner so that they'll see what I'm looking at. So uh, this is printed on both sides. It's um, part of the application uh, Mr. Basic sent to me. Um, it, so there's a plan and on the other side is an elevation. And um, what I'm getting at here is that, I, so I'm not an architect or a planner, but um, I'm a guy with a computer and I've photoshopped in or out the laneway of this application. And so 
as as it stands, we have not agreed to to um, to give the ownership of the laneway to the developer, and um, so I wanted to show like this. This is two buildings. What does this look like if, if we don't sell this laneway? We're the town of Grimsby, uh, represented by eight councillors and the mayor, is, is essentially partnering in this project. We have to sell land to the developer in order for this. This is a, an essential piece of the land, of this development, right? And um, so one of the things when we're talking about our demands, um, uh, so I like the restaurant use, and um, but I want parking to be applied to the restaurant per an industry standard, and I think that um, it should be two thirds front of house and one third back of house, and so I think that the plan for 17 restaurant spaces based on one third front of house should be applied to two thirds front of house, total of approximately 34 restaurant spaces, not 17. I understand that the parking can't be provided on site, and I would consider the parking could be provided off site at municipal lots by way of cash in lieu of parking. These 17 spots could be provided off site either by cash in lieu or on site by reducing the number of units. And I don't care which way um, the developer chooses, but. Um, so, so I would ask the question of staff, um, if we were to request cash in lieu of, of parking spaces for the restaurant, how much would be reasonable? And so I've asked some questions of uh, members of the community and I think that at one point there was an application and talk of cash in lieu at the rate of $25,000 per parking space was discussed, but I think that that discussion might have happened in the 90s. And so I don't know who's here from staff. So, so but what I'm getting at here is that like, if we're talking 17 spaces to be provided offsite by way of cash in lieu of parking, right? That this would, this could satisfy what I believe to be a reasonable amount of parking for that restaurant use. And I like the restaurant use. I, I don't want, I know that you could just remove the restaurant and say, okay, it's now it's just a, a retail store and, and retail requires less. But, but part of the, part of the decision behind if I choose to approve this is the value that's added by the restaurant in the development. So the other thing that I wonder is, um, what are we getting in exchange for this piece of town owned property? Like we're going to concede ownership to the developer for a nominal amount. I assume it will be $2. And um, so I, I was told by staff that one of the things that the benefits that we're getting is that there'll be two way access to the parking behind um, the judge and jester and Monheng Amici's, the old fire hall, and those few residential apartments that are above them. But um, where's the consideration for the other 30,000 residents in the town of Grimsby? And um, so why is there, why are we not, why are you not purchasing the land, the laneway from us? And why is there no cash value to that land? Um, so I feel like what's been brought to us so far is, is the very minimum standards. I feel like that you've, you've agreed to give us the least amount of parking as required, and in fact, you want to provide what, what seems to me like half as much parking for the restaurant, the least amount of setbacks and the least amount and the least, and the least, it's like, so we are going to give you the keystone to this development, right, which is the laneway. And look at that little Photoshop that I did. That Without the laneway, you're building two buildings, all right, two new applications. I don't know if you need two elevators or two fire alarms or two, I mean, this, Two buildings is a big deal, and it's it's way different than, than what you've proposed so far. And so, like, without us or me being one of the members in the majority, without us reconsidering this, well, I guess we go to the superior court. So, I mean, I don't particularly like the uh, the tandem parking, but like, maybe maybe residents can live with it. I don't know. 
one of the comments was you can just switch vehicles. I don't know if anybody parks front to back, but like for me and my wife to switch vehicles, I have to move the seat, I have to change the mirror. Um, sometimes, you know, I keep my glasses in the car and it's like, should I buy a second pair of glasses for night driving so that I can park in a tandem space, all right? And it's, it, it was something that was brought up last time. And so, but I, I do want to point out that tandem parking is not ideal, all right? But 16 of the, of the residents in these new buildings will have to park that way, all right? That's like 20% of the of the people who will live here will be parking back to back. And that's 32 spaces, 16 tandem spaces. That's 32 cars parked front to back. So I compare this, or I did compare this to um, the townhouses built over on just off of Livingston Avenue. And they all have two parking spaces, one in the driveway, one in the garage, all right? And we have these streets full of, of parking, the parked vehicles and the people they're not parking back to back. They're not parking one in the garage, one in the, one in the driveway. They're parking one in the driveway, one on the street, and then they're using their garage for um, garbage cans, baby strollers, bicycles, storage. Very few of them are actually using them for their second vehicle. So then I get phone calls from these residents five, 10, 15 years after the development is built, and they say, listen, I have a problem with uh, the amount of street parking. We want to change it for whatever reason to whatever their idea is how they're going to change it but the answer i have to give them is there's nothing i can do right we planned these neighborhoods with a certain amount of street parking that street parking is required on both sides of the street their residences have two spaces one in the driveway and one in the garage and they got to figure out how they're going to park their vehicles but this same problem this same question is what residents are going to ask me they're going to say similar to the Winston Road neighborhood where we have parking problems and residents are going to start parking in the visitor spots and we're going to get people calling. We're going to get condo boards from calling and saying, how do I enforce this? They're going to ask us to hire another bylaw officer. We've already taken on extra bylaw work to enforce parking in the Winston Road neighborhood. So now this is the first, I don't know whether you call it medium density or high density development downtown. And, uh, and look at the costs we've had, they're secondary costs, but look at the cost, for example, of additional bylaw enforcement. And that cost is borne by every taxpayer across the town. And we put tickets on your car, right? Like to the residents, I think, who are living there. So I guess I'm kind of ranting away here, but to summarize, the thing that I, that I would like to see is uh, the developer provide a reasonable amount of parking for the restaurant use. I like the restaurant use. And I, and I want to see that the developer will provide more than 17 spaces. I think that it should be two thirds front of house. And I think that the fact that this application came in with only a thousand square feet of front of house space in a 3000 square foot restaurant, I think that that is, I'm glad I spotted it, but it's just not, reasonable and um, I think that that parking can be provided off-site thank you Councillor Sharp Councillor Vardy thank you <clears throat> through you Mr. Mayor um, First thing I want to do, Mr. DeSantis, is to clarify a rumor. I am not anti-development. I've heard that said about me. It's not true. Um, the second rumor is I don't hate developers. I've heard that. It's not true. Um, but I do care about what gets built in our town. And, you know, as my colleague, Councillor Frakes, said, this building is going to define the future of our downtown. And, you know, it would be no surprise to anyone if, if you have aspirations of other parts of downtown as well. <clears throat> you know, because there's, there's a lot of older properties that could be developed. So this, this is a really important building that you're building. It's not just 
a building. So if you're wondering why people are getting so worked up about this and worked up about the details and why can't we be more flexible, it's because this is such an important building. This isn't just any building. This, this, is, this is the building that's going to set the town for how we look in the future. And it's really important to the residents of Grimsby. So that, that's something that, that I wanted to get across. And given that, it's, um, it's a huge responsibility and also a huge privilege uh, on both of us, on both the developer and on council, that we get it right, you know, that we make this the special building, the building that you'll be remembered for. So, um, for good or for bad. Um, so, in, in looking at what's come forward, um, the big issue is parking. We, you know, we, we know that the existing parking downtown is insufficient. We hear that all the time. We hear that from other building owners who say they could get this or that kind of development in or, you know, uh, this or that kind of business in, but there's in insufficient parking. That's without building your building. So, and, you know, we've already seen um, where the buildings have burned down, where we had the big fire. Now, that's just like an open parking lot because we need parking. So... Um, what we need from you is, you know, in order for me to support what you want to do, we need to have the required number of parking spots, including those for residents, visitors, retail, and restaurant. And when I say the, re the required number, and that's, that's no overlap, so, you know, we're not like the retail and restaurant aren't going to share um, you know, it's, it's like each category has its own set number and we need to have those spots. I don't know how you're going to do it. Maybe dig a deeper hole, put another, uh, another floor of underground parking. That's your business. But I do know that for me to support this, it's got to have the right number of parking. Um, the other thing is, as my colleague, uh, Councillor Sharp alluded to, um, we need to have a restaurant in that building. And the restaurant has to have the required number of parking spots. And when I, when I see something come forward that's not reasonable, sort of one third front of house and two third back of house for a restaurant, you know what it makes me feel? Like someone's trying to take advantage of me. Like someone's fudging the numbers so they could slip one by me. And that makes me resentful, you know? I don't like that. Like, let's, let's be honest with each other about what we're trying to do. The other thing is, um, you know, to, to come back and say, well, we're not going to build a restaurant. It's going to be just retail, so we don't need that much parking. And then what's going to happen is, because it's an ideal spot for um, a restaurant, I'm not saying you've done this, but I'm just saying, should you do that? It's such an ideal place for a restaurant that at some point, somebody will want to come in, put a restaurant in there for sure, and, uh, and there'll be insufficient parking. So, you know, it's a catch-22. So let's get it right from the beginning. So... Um, one third back of house for the restaurant, two thirds front of house. As Councillor Sharp said, that means 34 parking spaces, according to what uh, he did. And no silly business of, you know, oh, we're only going to have this much space in front of house. Like, d don't do that. Um, no more than four stories. You know, and I've heard presentations from our planning department said. Well, they've come down from eight to four. Well, could never have been eight. So that's not a concession. That's just that that just bugs me when when people aren't honest and upfront about you know what is doable, what the zoning says, and what makes sense down there. Um, tandem parking spots. 
to my mind, are useless. So to me, if you're giving me a proposal that includes tandem parking spots, they don't count. So, um, you know, th that's a non-starter for me. And I I'm sharing this with you not to be not to be mean, but for you to know exactly where I'm coming from and what I think is necessary. Um, the other thing I want to say is, you know, ideally, we would wait for the Supreme Court decision on the laneway. Um, the laneway has a value. It gives the town leverage, and it, it actually gives the town leverage over what you can build, what you can and cannot build. So if we own the laneway, it's two buildings. If, you know, if you want us to give you the laneway, um, then we've got to get something in return. That's only fair. So, um, and I, I, guess, I guess the last thing I want to say is whatever we agree to, it has to be held to the highest scrutiny of upholding such an agreement. So I'm very concerned. I don't want loopholes. I don't want little fudgy things that are going to happen after and, oh, yeah, but we could have done, you know, this. No, like I want everything to be upfront and clear and both, both parties to agree to it. And so we come away with a shared understanding and we both have a commitment, both of us, to moving that forward. Um, and then I guess lastly, uh, I, I do have a lot of uh, site plan considerations which uh, don't need to be discussed at this point, but I wanted to share with you um, what I felt were the, the critical elements for this to move forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Vardy. Uh, any further questions from Council? Councillor Cadwell? Thank you, Mayor Jordan. And uh, thank you to staff and the DeSantis team for uh, coming by tonight. I'm uh, listening, not agreeing to everything, but I'm, I'm learning too. So when you listen, you learn. Um, I just want to, there's been a lot of discussion about the parking. And uh, to my knowledge, the plan is meeting the parking requirements. Uh, am I happy about it? Not, not always happy about it. Uh, I've sat in, these, in this chamber and in, the, in, the, in our old chambers through many hearings, uh, OMB hearings and that. And uh, there's been uh, proposals with uh, a lot of amendment, a lot of amendments to our planning, our official plan, our, our zoning bylaw. But uh, again, to me, this development is, you know, it's meeting the parking requirements. Uh, come a long way. I remember the meeting at the Carnegie, and I was on council when you first brought this uh, forward to uh, Mr. DeSantis. And I think, I think the development is a, uh, and I, I respect what councillors are saying about it. it you know, it's the, uh, it's precedent setting for our downtown. This is a huge, important development. There's no doubt, and I think uh, I compliment our staff for recognizing that. And, and working with uh, with the uh, the development team, uh, so I, I think we're going to get there. I really do, and I think it's something that we will be proud of because, you know, sometimes give and take gets gets good solutions in that. So there's always opportunities. Uh, the laneway, I uh, again, I'm not going to get into a lot of it. I have a little history with the laneway when my father had his office right next to the Roxy Theater. So I'm very familiar with the laneway. Used it a lot of, a lot of times over the, over the years and that. So um, to me, the important part of the laneway is the front part of the laneway that makes it accessible for businesses and for the residents who live in the area. You know, and, and again, with the uh, proposal, I think, it's a, I think it's a very fair proposal. I'm just looking at the laneway, the back part of the laneway. Well, there used to be a big barn there, and I painted it. My brothers and I painted it a few times. Anyways, but again, that was the access part for my dad to get into his office. So, anyway, so I, I think we're at a, at, at a, at a reasonable uh, 
point with the laneway, uh, with both sides of this, uh, the, with the town and the developer. Uh, the parking spots, again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I heard there's 110 parking spots uh, in the area, which encompasses private and public parking spots, or am I high on that number? I thought I heard that, sorry, I thought I heard that number, but maybe I'm, I could be wrong on that, but the number is, there are a lot of parking spots there. Uh, and whether you go, whether they're going to, sorry, the DIA boundaries, Kerman Avenue to Robert, sorry, Robinson Street. Anyways, uh, I'd like to be, correct, if I need to be corrected on that, I would look forward to that. Uh, the last thing is, uh, this has been uh, this development with staff, and, and again, following it for quite a number of years. Uh, I think it's really, it has really come a long ways. And I think uh, as a counselor, I am trusting staff, working with the developer to do the right thing for our community. Again, I, I, I wanna reemphasize the importance of the building, definitely. Because uh, again, I'm sorry to be stuck on repeat here, but it is, it, it is and will be precedent setting to our downtown. So uh, um, that's why I supported it. And, uh, and that's all I've got to say right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cadwell. Uh, any further questions? Councillor Dunst? Uh, Councillor Vane, you wanna go? You haven't spoken yet. And Mayor Jordan, I'll go after them, thanks. Uh, right. No, the, the only the only comment that I would like to offer, if any, is that uh, as the representative of a lot of the businesses in that area, I know they strongly support this and really want this development to go forward. Uh, I've never heard a negative thing. And as far as the parking, I've never had a problem parking downtown. And I've been to some major events down there, as we all have. So I, I really have nothing more to say. I support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vane. Uh, Councillor Bothwell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, I've got a few questions, well, a few comments. Um, with respect to parking, uh, back in November 2018, I raised the concerns about the shared parking um, to Mr. Basic and received a response at that time uh, with regards to the previous application. Um, and there were 17 shared, or 17 um, uh, visitor or visitor, uh, not visitor, um, resident, uh, retail and commercial spaces at that time, as well as number of visitor units. And my question was, how will people be directed to go into the private building entrance uh, to access the public parking spaces, which are for the retail and the restaurant? And the response was, there's no public spaces, that rather shared spaces for patrons and guests of the residential units. And then I asked, how will the 15 spaces be protected for patron use, which is the restaurants and the retail, and employees of the establishments, and not used by the condo residents and their visitors? And the response was, they will be used by both and enforced by the condo board. So my question is, um, we're now looking at 28 um, retail and restaurant spaces being offered. And my question stand again, uh, will these be shared parking spaces um, that will be monitored or will not be monitored. There will be no enforcement, I'm assuming, if they're shared because that would be very difficult to enforce. Um, and, and, they will, and so the question is, will they be shared or will they actually be dedicated and marked and reserved for the restaurant and retail use only? Um, so that's not the impression I got. So my experience here being in uh, the Winston neighborhood is when you have shared parking, such as Aqua Blue and Aqua Zool, where each building just kind of built on the other and all the parking became one big blur, um, it's a free-for-all. So um, I suspect however many parking spaces we get, it will be first come, first served, and it's not fair, again, as I said, for the condo board staff to enforce um, our retail or restaurant parking, um, and, and I'd like to know how it's gonna be managed. Um, I then go to the original SGL peer review report back from October 2018 that um, had some recommendations into how this development should, how the approval of the, of the application should proceed. And there was a number of conditions, um, one to five, one being that the official plan amendment 
be approved once recommendations three and four are met. And three and four in that recommendation was the cultural heritage report be updated. And four was that prior to the adoption of the official plan amendment and approval for the zoning bylaw, the entirety of the property covered by the application be merged into one lot. So I go back to my previous concerns with this development. And again, I'm going to state as well as my other counselors have that I'm very supportive of the development there. I appreciate all the hard work that's gone into how it has evolved to where it is today and the way that the developer has worked with us to try to come with something that will fit better into that space. And as Councilor Barty said, it is an anchor building. It's a landmark for our downtown. We have to get it right. I know the heritage components have gone back and forth a few times. So I do appreciate that. I'm not against development again, totally 100%. Again, respectable and where it should be. But in this case, my concern still evolves around the laneway and the ownership of the laneway and the agreement, the settlement agreement itself. The language in the settlement agreement to me, I look at it as an omnibus agreement. It's similar to Bill 197 that just got passed by the government. This omnibus agreement has so much language in it that if this, then this will happen and stuff in escrow and then the season will be registered on title. And then this, there's just so many moving parts in that omnibus agreement that anything can fall through or be misinterpreted. It's just, it's too, if something doesn't happen, something else can't take place. So to me, I go back to square one. The ownership of the laneway is paramount. I believe that we have to make that determination. We know already that there is some bill up in the air with the bronze section at Ontario Street with that building. So regardless of whether we get our piece and we do these easements, there's still that other aspect where there has not been a resolution. So I really believe we need to get that title, I's and T's crossed. And then we can look at having possession of it and using our tools that we have for selling the laneway and doing, using that tool to get an appropriate value that would help us in determining how then that building can be done. Then those properties can be merged as well as per the recommendations in that SGL report. So I think it's important that that merging occur. And then we can look at the easement. And then as this recommendation also said, at that point, the official plan amendment and the zoning bylaw amendment can be considered. This omnibus agreement rolls all that into one. And it actually says in the agreement that we won't, that we're in total support of the OBA and the ZBA as it stands. So I just have concerns that we're not following through in the order that we need to on this. And that's my main concern. The other thing is there's timelines that have to be met that something doesn't happen because of COVID and other relapse. There's just a bunch of things there that I'm just not, I'm just not comfortable with. I'm going to move to the value of the laneway and the betterment of the laneway. One of the positions is that by having the easements and allowing us to go through the building to Duran, we're providing a betterment to the town. Well, I've got a bit of a question about that because the portion that is being built through the building will look really nice, but we still have a nine foot piece of gravel that's coming from Ontario Street to the building. So somebody's got to pay for improvements to that, the additional use to that, for making it safe and for the increased amount of traffic coming in off Ontario in and out and however we're going to do the drug deal on that. The town is going to be left with a responsibility to update that and upgrade it to a standard that's going to be much higher because of the additional uses that we're going to see on it. So I think we have to really look at a holistic plan for that laneway as we move forward. And that's going to come through, I think, once we know we have ownership of it. And then we can go to, we can go into discussions on how this building should look once all the properties are merged again. We can come back to the table with this. We can go to tribunal with mediation. That was offered to us October 20th when LPAC considers where we're at. I think, you know, we can say, hey, we're getting somewhere. We've got some really, you know, good plans here, but we need that laneway result first. And then we're more than willing to enter into that tribunal with mediation. We have options down the road. We don't have to say yes or no to this today. We can say, let's get that laneway and then let's work and sit down and say, okay, 
are we in a place where we're now happy when these can be merged? Is this the building we want? Is this the parking that we want? And how will those rules apply to it? So, again, I go back to saying it's just, I just felt I'm uncomfortable with the omnibus agreement in front of us, the way it's all tied into one. I think we need to separate it into the proper steps that we need to do in order. And then that's my main concern. Again, I'm going to say that, Mr. DeSantis, I do appreciate all you've done and where we're at and the steps that they've taken to try to get to a place where it is a better fit for the team and what our community wants. But I go back to my original arguments on the laneway. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have another comment, if please, if you don't mind. I think we have Councillor Dunstall ahead of you. Okay, thank you. But Councillor Ritchie hasn't spoken on the matter yet, so I'll have Councillor Ritchie go first. Thank you. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. First, I want to thank the individuals from the Century Condos team to show up here, our lawyer. Uh, but more importantly, I want to thank the councillors who uh, brought this forward for reconsideration. Um, you know, I think that's a testament to how important this development is for our downtown. Um, you know, and when I look at this development, I think that one of the only questions that I have uh, for this here right now is that I believe that the previous agreement would ensure that Century Condos provided all the parking spaces uh, under under our bylaw. So all those spots would be met no matter what the situation was, we'd all be sitting there and 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 our bylaw would be met with with adequate parking. Now I know some councillors uh, have concerns for tandem parking and so forth and maybe that's the, the reason why they may have voted like that in the past, maybe they didn't. But I just wanna uh, ask that question and, and make sure that they, they've always stated that they were going to provide adequate parking, so if we can get a confirmation on that. Um, now with this, when I look at responsible, uh, this agreement for the laneway, I think going, entering into an agreement without going to Superior Court is responsible. I think that it saves this town's money. When I look at that laneway now, what does that laneway provide for our town? It provides access to the businesses that are there. Nobody else besides access to that business, the businesses there, use that laneway. So improving it and making this go, uh, making it like a, a laneway that improves the safety, the enhancement of it, I think it's a very positive thing. And uh, again, so I know that we always talk about this value, but if it sits as it is right now, I, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I don't know what the value really is if it, if it stays status quo. Um, so I, I do. That's, this is some of the reasons why I voted for this project in the past. We had multiple developers say that this is responsible planning, and that's why I supported this. Um, so again, I, I know that, uh, that we're very close. Again, I want to thank my other councillors for bringing this uh, forward for reconsideration, as it is a testament to the importance of this project, as it does set the, uh, the standard for our downtown moving forward. And I really hope that we can get something done, if not tonight, but in the near future. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Councillor Dunstall. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, would, it be, would it be appropriate for me to address the developer with some questions? We're going to take those away. Oh, this. So, <clears throat> while well, these are indirect questions, they're not about this development. The process was that we we'll take any of your responses and come back after recess. So we want to share it all the uh, Well, the point I'm trying to make is this, and so I won't ask the questions. I'll just make statements. And that is that we want a state-of-the-art building in our downtown. Uh, Mr. DeSantis, this isn't his first building that he's built in this town. He came to us in, got to be 2015, I might be out a year, with Aqua Blue. He actually came the same night that Brant Haven came. And Councillor Cadwell can attest to that, that 
we first viewed the uh, Brant Haven, maybe it was before 2014, I might have been there as a citizen. Anyhow, that's irrelevant. The point being that we saw what um, Brant Haven was going to build on Place Polonade with some disappointment. And then Mr. DeSantis came with Aqua Blue and he kind of knocked our socks off. We were just flabbergasted with the first. And we said to Brant Haven, this is the kind of development we're looking for in the West End. Then Mr. DeSantis, I think that was his biggest project at the time, then came back with Aquazul. And Aquazul had a commercial component to it too, as we can see from the QEW. And I think that is a state of an art uh, commercial building, as some of our staff have already been through it and made very positive comments about the quality of the building. I mean, the fourth floor has balconies for the offices. I mean, that it's just, it, it has a wow factor. Oh, am I getting cut off or no? It has a wow factor. I, I think this developer wants to build a state of the art building in our downtown. And I think we gotta let him go ahead and do that. He will do a wonderful job. The restaurant, we can talk about whether it's 800 square feet or 2,000 square feet for uh, public usage as our, 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 our town planner, our director of planning said that if somebody comes with a restaurant that wants 2,000 square feet of public space, then that parking has to be provided. It has to be worked into the equation. So it's going to happen. And while I was sitting there and we talked again about tandem parking, it suddenly dawned on me, and if anybody knows the area I live in, it's called Sumner Crescent, and it was Lasani Homes that built the row housing, and I happen to live in one. We probably have the longest driveways in any development in this town. You can put three vehicles in the driveway. I guess you could call it tandem parking. And sometimes my wife's car is in the way of my truck and I get her keys and I move it and then I pull my truck out and put her car back in. I don't have to take my sunglasses out and put them in her car or switch anything else about. I think we can all live with tandem parking. It's just, it's, it's part of it. Now, I, the other point I wanted to make about the parking on Sumner Crescent, we probably have as much street parking as anybody else does, but we've got the longest driveway. So again, as I repeated, my, I'll repeat myself, we need to get out of our vehicles. We've got to look at walkable communities. It's a way of the future. We gotta stop trying to create so much parking. In 10 to 15 years, we're going to be autonomous vehicles. We won't need all this parking. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunstall. Councillor Vane? Uh, yes, I just want to address a couple of points. I, I agree totally with uh, Councillor Dunstall. Uh, my driveway, as most members of Council know, is also a double driveway. My wife parks in the garage, I park on the driveway, It's uh, or vice versa. And uh, if I have to get up early in the morning, or if she has to get up early in the morning, one of us is in the way, we move it. It's, you know what, it's, it's back to life. Uh, so tandem parking doesn't bother me at all, but I just want to address uh, some of the comments in regards to continuing taking this just to, conf just to confirm that we own this road. That, well, there's a big, uh, big contentious point I have there. The big contentious point is to confirm. We have no guarantee that the court's gonna rule in our favor. As a matter of fact, I've spoken to a number of legal people that have said there's a good chance that the developer is going to win the court case in the Superior Court. So why would I ask the taxpayers to take another 1.5% tax increase next year just so I can try and prove a point that we may end up losing? So then we could be at hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees on top of what we've already spent. Plus we could lose. The developer then comes to El Pat and says, this is what I want. You know El Pat's going to support it. 
And then I've got to go back to the businesses in my ward and say, I'm sorry, you know, it, oh, you're going bankrupt. Well, that's too bad because we couldn't afford to put in another building that would bring more residents to the area. As Councillor Dunstall said, and as, as um, the director of planning said, we're changing. We're not based around cars anymore. We're looking to the future. At some point, we're going to have enough transit. We're going to have people that aren't going to want to hop in a car. We have to get beyond this. This is stuff that's so organized and settled at site plan. We are personalizing this too much. And if we lose this court case, we are going to look really bad because we're going to be out hundreds of thousands of dollars. And remember, every hundred thousand dollars is a 1% tax increase to all taxpayers. So I think we better start thinking that way instead of being so cocky as to believe that we're going to win this case. And no disrespect to our attorneys, but I think they would admit that it can go either way based on the judge. That's my opinion, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vane. Uh, any further questions? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. I know uh, several of my colleagues have got up and they talk about the future and these flying car, Jetson, drive automobile, <laughs> autonomous vehicles. But so this is not the, the current. So currently we have people commute to work. We have people that drive two cars. We have people that are buying these one bedrooms. They're, they're two working professionals. I, I think that um, Mr. DeSantis and some of the other developers that I've talked to, the demographics that they're selling to, are um, first time home buyers. They're younger. They are partnered with someone. They both work. So um, whether or not that's their demographic, maybe they're trying to sell to someone else. But point is, I mean, it's a fantasy world where we're talking about, oh, like one day there's gonna be um, autonomous vehicles and like in the next 15 years, it was one statement that was made by one of my colleagues and uh, so um, th that's not the reality. That's it's a pipe dream. I mean, that, that could happen, right? but like it's not a current reality, and, and we shouldn't be we we shouldn't be planning on like decisions about it's it's just not real. I mean, we don't know if they're going to even license autonomous vehicles here. And who's going to afford them and who's going to drive them and is it going to be the people who live in the the 515 square foot one bedrooms downtown i don't know so i just don't think that we should be making our decisions based on anything other than our current situation thanks thank you councillor sharp any further questions seeing none uh we will uh Take, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Cadwell. Sure, uh, if you'd like me to comment, I, I will. I will comment. Uh, I, I do feel uh, that that I'm certainly not against development by any means, and uh, I think that this. Uh, can be a great development for the downtown core. I will tend to lead with uh, Councillor Bothwell and agree that we need to uh, determine the, the laneway at this time. I also feel uh, that the parking uh, has its limitations. Uh, maybe uh, if it meets our uh, official plan for parking, unfortunately, it's not really this council's official plan. Uh, it was the official plan um, decided by previous councils and I understand that that that's what we have to deal with uh, what I um, do see is that I really think that tandem spots are possibly will be an issue and these shared spots where they're visitor parking restaurant parking who are who's going to park there I, I really think that we're being a little bit naive to think that, that that's not going to be an issue. Uh, the Winston Road area, what's our number one concern at council? It's probably parking. Uh, the developers uh, were able to uh, 
reduce numbers of spots there. Each development reduced the, their parking a little bit in that area and compounding effect, we end up with uh, an area that is lacking several spots, multiple spots, and uh, cars are being towed out of visitor spots. Uh, it, parking is the number one problem in the Winston Road area. Do we want to make the same mistake twice in our downtown? This is the first step of revitalizing our downtown. I, I think we want to do it right as a council. We're certainly not against development. We, we want a great development, and I think it has the potential to be a great development. Uh, I think we're getting close. I really think that, that the laneway decision is problematic because we had COVID in the middle of, uh, of this. We made our decision for the August 31st deadline in January, we had 90 days where nothing was done. Um, Superior Court was closed. Actually, nothing went, was done. We're not up to full speed yet, unfortunately. And, and, and it's, a, it's a reality. We, just, we chose not to extend this deadline. Uh, we have LPAT at the in October. I think we can legitimately say that we're, we are proceeding with the uh, the laneway output or input um, and and figuring out where that's going. I think uh, LPAT is is seeing that we are moving forward here. Are we ready to approve it tonight? I don't know. Uh, we are certainly moving closer, and we certainly are much closer than we were even three weeks ago. Uh, so, I think that's my um, comments as we go into uh, the recess. Uh, I really think we are close, and, and uh, I think there's a lot of good answers and a lot of good debate out here, and, and we've kept it, uh, we've done really well tonight uh, moving forward. So, I think we'll move into the recess right now, unless anyone else has any more comments.
welcome back, everyone. Uh, our recess is finished, and uh, now we're on uh, response session. The legal and uh, DeSantis team will respond to all questions, comments, and clarifications. Uh, everyone ready? Do you want to come up to this mic here, or? I was just wondering if we should wait for uh, Mr. Doherty to return. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, thank you. I didn't realize he wasn't there. So we'll wait for uh, John Doherty to return. Here he is. All right, thank you. nice to take the mask off. Okay, um, Your Worship, members of council and staff, uh, my name's Calvin Lance. I'm the uh, solicitor for Homes for DeSantis uh, here this evening. I'd like to start by thanking uh, everyone for attending and staying so late tonight, and in particular, uh, reopening this matter so that it could be reconsidered and debated and talked about and thought about by our client. Um, I think the comments and the discussion uh, was very helpful, and it's informed uh, some of the decisions that we've been able to make very quickly in the room uh, during the recess. Um, so one of the themes we heard consistently by all the councillors and, and yourself, uh, your worship, is that there's an importance on having a landmark building at this location in the downtown. And I think that's an important consideration for everyone, including uh, Mr. DeSantis, who's quite eager to produce a landmark building and for it to be a success. And so we're confident we can deliver that as a product. With respect to the laneway, again, we heard a consistent theme that there is a need for certainty to have the laneway resolved and put behind us. And the deal, that's been negotiated with um, Mr. Doherty and his team and our office provides certainty that we can approach the Superior Court of Justice with a consent order that would deliver a lane and through the arrangements that we've made with the agreements, there would be an improvement to the existing lane. There would be a widening of the lane and it'll provide for public access and usage of the lane in the future. It'll provide certainty as to the ownership of the lane. It'll resolve the issues today and it'll resolve issues in the future or surrounding that lane. And perhaps most importantly, there's going to be a contribution of approximately $100,000 to defray the town's cost in negotiating this arrangement. We have talked our t with our team and we're committed to put a cap on the number of units at 87, so a maximum number of 87 units for this development. Now, of course, we heard a lot about the parking and we've given that a lot of serious consideration, both before this meeting and during the recess. And we're committed to provide parking at 1.5 parking spaces per unit, excluding tandem spaces. We are going to meet the zoning requirement for commercial parking. We're gonna meet the re zoning requirement for the restaurant land, for the restaurant use rather and maintain 93 square meters as a cap for the public restaurant space. Also, with respect to parking, we'd like to confirm that there will be no shared parking. Now, we believe these 
changes and concessions on behalf of Homes by DeSantis address the concerns that have been raised through the course of this uh, public meeting tonight and, and prior public meetings. And what it's going to do is bring the needed intensification to the downtown. And it's going to bring $7.6 million of community benefits to this town over the next 10 years. Now, I've come up here just now with um, the planner, uh, Mr. Mr. Arians, John Arians, and, um, and I'm gonna ask him if he has anything in addition to add to my comments. Thank you, Calvin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, I too echo those comments uh, that we, we do appreciate your, your efforts tonight and we look forward to creating this landmark building. Um, earlier it was talked about you know, the development at Winston Road and Aqua Blue and Aqua Zool. Not only were these landmark buildings and, and set the, the bar in, in the Winston neighborhood, uh, the Aqua uh, Zool project actually won uh, best mid-rise in all of Canada. So that, that's a de a, the degree of the architectural commitment that Mr. DeSantis will bring. And, and certainly we want to uh, carry that forward um, into your downtown setting. We, we recognize it's a landmark building. We recognize it's an important site. And, and we look forward to that fine tuning of the site plan. At IBI Group, we have the pleasure of being um, on the roster for Tim Hortons, and we do all of the McDonald's restaurants across Canada. It is common to accept a floor area cap based on parking. Whether I'm in Calgary, whether I'm in Vancouver, whether I'm in St. John's, Newfoundland, a cap based on parking is standard in the restaurant industry. So when we have 17 parking spots available for the restaurant, that limits the amount of floor space. What's left over will be the washrooms, the vestibules, the kitchen, the cooler, the storage areas. And sometimes it is two thirds of the floor area. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But regardless, the floor area cap sets the tone for the restaurant based on parking. It's a very common uh, practice. We've heard that there's insufficient parking in the downtown. These 87 units and the residents in those units are not gonna contribute to that parking problem because they're gonna be able to walk to Teddy's. They're gonna be able to walk to the TD Bank. They're gonna be able to walk to the florist shop, to the Dutch store, to buy whatever products, whatever services they require. They're not gonna be exacerbating your parking. In fact, that's, this is what you want. You want alternative transportation options. Bicycle lockers are being provided. Um, uh, you, you now have the, 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 the on-demand transit component. These residents will help contribute to that. There's no need for cash in lieu for parking because we're going to be fully compliant with your parking requirements. M Mr. Lance just mentioned the economic benefit and, and consider this now in a time of COVID where we, we, we are desperately looking for economic stimulus, uh, the construction industry, uh, a, a maximum of 87 suites is 87 stoves, 87 refrigerators, 87 microwaves, probably several hundreds of windows that are gonna require dra drapery treatments. Uh, new furniture being purchased in, in these units. It's a significant economic boost and, and one that we certainly need at this time of year. So there, there are significant financial impacts to the town of Grimsby in a, in a very positive manner. So from, from a planning standpoint, we will comply fully with your parking requirements, as, as Mr. Lance indicated. We will not count the tandem spaces. The tandem spaces will be an extra. So on top of complying with the parking, whatever tandem spaces are being proposed is an extra that we can offer to uh, the, uh, the residents of this community. 
So we do look forward to fine tuning the site plan, dealing with your heritage committee, coming up with a facade that everyone is, is going to be in love with because this truly will be a landmark building and we look forward to completing it here in Grimsby. So those will be our, our comments. Thank you, John and uh, Calvin. Uh, all right, uh, I guess we move on to the next. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, council clarification question from council. Councilor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor Jordan. So I'm getting here. It looks like there's no change. All right, so the reconsideration, it, it seems like there's 87 units. There was always 87 units. In fact, the first iteration of this, there was 86 units. All right, but, um, and then you're gonna provide 1.5 parking spaces per residential unit. And, um, you're gonna still provide the same amount of parking for that one third front of house restaurant, right? 93 square meters of like 282 square meters of restaurant, 93 square meters. And I know Mr. Arians is like the guru of like planning Tim Hortons and stuff, but uh, it, so the, we're not changing. Like you, it's unreasonable for us to consider that, that you guys are just gonna make the front of house smaller. You're gonna, like, why don't you just take all the parking out? Right? Why don't you just make it a takeout restaurant? Right? The only a layover spot for where you can pick it up. I mean, to me, that was one of the things that I said was most important, was providing a restaurant that was a realistic size. And I think that 93 of 282 square meters is not realistic, and it's unreasonable. And, and I know that the reason you're doing it is because you can't provide parking for it. And then, so, so I offer the option, and I think that maybe my mind might be changed if you would provide the parking off-site, all right, but still provide parking for the restaurant at a reasonable size. And, but, but I can see that you haven't taken that into consideration. And maybe there's another option. Maybe there's another chance for you guys to reconsider that. Um, when we talk about no shared parking, um, will the commercial and restaurant parking be signed? Will it say commercial? Like, will it... so I, I'd like to see that the so, so that the residents know and so that visitors know because residents can be told through letters from the condo board, but visitors won't know where they can park and if they can sign the spots to say these spots are assigned to um, the commercial and restaurant use to avoid confusion where you're gonna have visitors parking parking there. And you may have that anyways, but I'd like to see that sign. And um, yeah, like I said, uh, what's the difference than, than what I said no to already? And, and why would I, why do I change my mind? All right, give me a reason. Give me a reason, give us a reason to, to, to vote differently. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Sharp, for the questions. Oh, John? On to that, Mr. Mayor. There's a substantial change here, Councillor, in that the bylaw will have a cap of 87 units. That's the maximum. In order to comply with the parking, it'll likely be 83 units or 84 units or 85 units. We have to strike a balance between the available parking, the commercial, the retail, the restaurant, and the number of units. The number of units will be at 1.5, which is a pretty substantial parking requirement, considering that in Aqua Blue and Aqua Azul, it's 1.25. And we're in a downtown area, and, and a downtown area functions much like a shopping center. You park in one location, you go visit this store, that store, that store, you get your hair cut over here, you get a burger in the food court. That's how parking works in the downtown, much the same as a shopping center. So the bylaw has a cap 
of 87 units, it will likely be much less than that in order to meet that balance. And as far as the one-third, two-third, ultimately the restaurant operator and his chef and his staff will design that space. It has a maximum of three, 282 square meters. That's allocated to the restaurant. In English, that's 3,035 square feet. 1,000 will be the public floor area for which the parking is determined. That leaves 600 square feet for washrooms, and we need an accessible washroom and two, I'll call them male-female washrooms, but we're supposed to be gender neutral. So we've got 600 square feet of washrooms. We have an entrance vestibule. We have a kitchen. We have storage areas. We have coolers. That will make up the other 1,400 square feet. So you can't just say one-third, two-third, and it should be the opposite. The one-third, the 1,000 square feet will be the cap. And if that restaurant entrepreneur does not require the full 282 square meters, then through the site plan process, there might be additional locker space. There might be additional common areas added. I mean, we don't know what the future entrepreneur restaurant chef is going to require, but we know that the public floor area will not exceed 1,000 square feet. That'll be in your bylaw and you can control that. So for all intent and purposes, there is a sub substantial change here in the maximum number of units complying with the 1.5 parking spaces. Um, and, and as far as the separating the commercial and the visitor parking and the retail parking, that will be signed. It'll be part of the site plan process. The condo board will regulate it. Your bylaw officers do not have to come on the private property and enforce it. The condo corporation has more than oppor ample opportunities to deal that. So I think we've struck the balance between parking and intensity and size of, of building. And, and it, it has been a substantial change coming uh, to meet these parking requirements. Thanks, Mayor Jordan. Um, so my question would be directed to Mr. Arians. How many parking spaces will be on site? Uh, can you break it down? At this point, I cannot. I can tell you it'll be 1.5 spaces per unit and the maximum number of units will be 87. That I, I, that's the 1.5. It, it includes visitor parking, yes, sir. Okay. It includes meeting your retail parking requirements for a restaurant with a certain cap on its public floor area. It'll meet your retail parking demand for the rest of the retail space. You add up the number of units, the restaurant, the retail space, that's your number of parking spots. That will determine the exact number of units. It will not exceed 87. Can you further explain excluding tandem? So there, through the chair, there is an opportunity still to provide tandem parking, but it won't count for the required parking in the zoning bylaw. It's extra, it's above. So if my wife and I decide to take a, a suite in, in Mr. DeSantis's building, we have two vehicles, I'll gladly take a tandem spot. I, I'll have her key fob with my key fob and I have no problems moving her car to get mine out and vice versa. It's a luxury to have two parking spots. So for, for all intent and purposes, the tandem spots don't even count in your bylaw calculations. They're an extra. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further questions, Council? Councillor Cadwell. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Jordan, through you. Uh, this is interesting information, and I'm not sure whether it just came tonight through your, your team. Uh, if I may, and I don't mean to be uh, uh, 
at the last minute, could, could staff comment with these new initiatives? Uh, would, that, would that be a proper time maybe now, that just to hear from our staff just on these new initiatives, if they could comment? I would, I'd be very interested in hearing their... I think uh, we need to hear from the rest of council first before we have staff okay. comment. Thank you. Councillor Barty. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm kind of of the feeling the devil's in the details, so I would really like to see the exact numbers of what's being proposed before I can vote on something that says, oh, it's all going to work out, we'll just have less of this or that or whatever. So I really need to see the numbers, I need to see it broken down. So I'd like to share that with you. Thank you. I think they'll be able to go back and do that for um, <clears throat> later in the meeting. So, uh, council, Councillor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, kudos, you're getting close. But uh, I, I'd like, Councillor Vardy, I'd like to get some numbers in here. I, I want, just want to clarify one thing. 1.5 units per, 1.5 parking per unit, whatever that number is. Are you saying over and beyond that, we're still going to have the tandem parking spaces? Yes. yes so, that's, so that's an extra, an extra bunch of parking? Above. Okay, that's good. Um, the, the, the restaurant is, is intriguing to me. Um, so there's 2,000 square feet of space that's dedicated to the operations part of the restaurant, and there's 1,000 square feet 3, to the, 000. sorry, yeah, 3,000 in total. Yeah. yeah. 2,000 for the operational piece of the restaurant, and the 1,000 is the seating area for the, for the patrons, I take it. So what does uh, the zoning bylaw say for 1,000 square feet of restaurant space in terms of parking? Does anyone have that number? 17 spaces. How many? 17. 17, okay. So that, those two, that number won't change. It, it's, I mean, it's, it'll always be the 2,000 to 1,000. That 1,000 won't change to a bigger number? That's correct. Yeah? Okay. Um, On the legal cost, $1,000 to defray the legal cost, how does that work? Can I, who do I ask? John? Or do I ask you guys? Uh, What's that based on? How does that work? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, uh, it's a payment that's been negotiated uh, with uh, the DeSantis team, and uh, it will be uh, uh, payable to the town. Uh, to help defray the cost with regards to the Superior Court matter. I'm going to ask a hypothetical question. If we all are happy with what Mr. DeSantis is proposing here and we come to some kind of an agreement, do we still need to go down the path of going to Supreme Court or Superior Court and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars? Cost on both sides. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, both sides would avoid the costs that would be incurred in pursuing the litigation further. If we go down that road, if we go down that road, and if we agree to the settlement, yes. So I'm trying to figure out a way of asking this question, but anyway. So from the legal side of things, what is the benefit of us going to, either one of one, one party or the other going to superior court if we agree with this? I mean, what's the point in going to superior court? I mean, one, one of the, the parties could just bow out, right? Your party, go for it. The, the agreement uh, under the master settlement agreement contemplated 
that the parties would come to uh, an agreement whereby we would jointly ask the Superior Court to give a consent order. And that would deal with uh, ownership of um, the part of the laneway up to the DeSantis property and for the town and the balance that is between the two DeSantis properties to DeSantis subject to all the other agreements uh, with regards to the uh, construction and operation of that laneway out to Doran Avenue. But it would all be done through consent uh, orders with the court and so there would be relatively little costs incurred, certainly nowhere near the scale of costs if it were a contested hearing. So on the same subject, what's what's the advantage, what's the what's the upside for the town owning parts of that laneway in, at, at the end of all this? I mean, we've broken it into five different pieces, I believe. Is there any benefit for the town to own any piece of that laneway if we reach some kind of an arrangement here? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, there is a, uh, a real benefit in terms of it being a public laneway, and it's going to be a, an expanded uh, laneway. It'll be approximately six times the size of the current laneway. The laneway will be in the expanded portion uh, through the DeSantis property will be uh, built at the developer's cost and uh, will be uh, subject to all the other terms uh, of the agreement uh, with regards to that. So, but the, the key element is that there will be public use of that laneway uh, all the way uh, through and out to Doran Avenue. I'm off. Oh, thank you. I think you've answered my questions. Thank you. Further questions from Council? Councillor Bain or Councillor Bothwell? I have nothing further, thank you. I have nothing further, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sharp. I'd like to move that we defer this until we can get some actual drawings that show the parking and show the number of units. And uh, if there's been some changes, there's now more or less tandem spaces or a, a difference in the, um, the parking now excluding tandem. I'd like to see, like if the architect and the consultant can bring us um, some more plans and I'd like to move. Just, so just a clarification here. Uh, I believe that, that the numbers are going to come back uh, either after the, uh, right after this recess, after we discuss. So we're not voting on this motion now? Yeah, uh, we won't vote on a motion to defer. There's still, a, the agenda still calls for uh, uh, another recess and a, another response. All right, sorry, I didn't, I'm not following the agenda. Thanks. Yeah. Mr. Arians, thank you. So j just to, to put it in perspective, um, the 87 units at 1.5 would require 130 parking spots. 131, thank you, David, or Councillor. Uh, the restaurant requires 17. The retail requires 10. So that's 158 in total. That's what your bylaw, that's what your planning document would stipulate. Uh, it would then be up to Mr. Harrison and Mr. DeSantis to design a building within those parameters, within those zoning regulations. So it's, it's not like tonight we're not going to be able to go into that room and come up with a building and, and adjust the parking. That's something we will do when we proceed to the site plan stage. What, what is before us is an official plan amendment, a zoning bylaw amendment, and, and a settlement. So if council is satisfied that the bylaw sets the stage for this development, then Mr. DeSantis and, and our team has the instructions to make it comply with these rules and regulations. 
and we would then come in through the site plan process to do so. But that's basically how I, I would hope it would follow from here. Thank you, Mr. Arians. Councillor Varden. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. How many of those spaces will be visitor and will they be marked as visitor? So th through the chair to Walter, I'm pretty sure that the visitor requirement is 0.25 and the per unit requirement will be 1.25, uh, but I stand to be corrected on that. It's, the visitor parking is captured in the 1.5. Um, we'll we'll fine tune that number. Thank you. Yeah, just just before we recess, if there's any other questions from council, uh, you have the floor now. Uh, or Councilor Richie. Mr. Mayor. So I guess my, my, my question that I want clarification on is that um, with the 1.5, there is some tanning, tandem parking spaces, but they're only going to count as one space, correct? Correct. So even though you could fit two in, so, so whoever gets it, it would be additional parking, but it's not going to be considered in the equation. So basically, don't even say tandem, it's one really long parking space. Right? <laughs> it's that long driveway. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification, Councillor Ritchie. Seeing no further questions uh, or comments from Council, uh, I guess we'll go into our uh, second recess now. Uh, Um, we've had an opportunity to put together a, a, a breakdown basically showing what the proposal was before we walked in here tonight and then the proposal that we put on the table just now. Uh, I trust everyone's had a, received a copy of it and has had an opportunity to look at it. Uh, essentially the number of units, 87 units that was proposed before and that's currently the same. Uh, 22 visitor spaces and that's the same. Um, but where the difference comes in is with respect to the, um, the tenant parking spaces. Previously it was 116 spaces plus 15 uh, tandem spaces. We've removed the 15 required tandem spaces to meet the zoning and now there'll be 131 tenant spaces. Now, some of those spaces may be long and which would allow, as we, you know, we've heard, that allow for additional parking, but it's not required to meet the zoning standard. So there will be 1.5 parking spaces per unit. It will meet the commercial parking and the restaurant parking standard in the zoning. And then at the bottom of the sheet, we've just indicated what that parking standard is for commercial and for restaurant. Um, I think it's um, it's important to note, and, and I think Ms. Arians had indicated, the detailed design of the building would be worked out as part of a site plan application, and that's a standard course. And what we have before us tonight is a settlement relating to an OPA and a ZBA. Um, we'd like to encourage the councillors to do two things. Uh, in addition to supporting the settlement proposal we put forward here and the, the master settlement agreement um, as a package to go forward to give us that certainty on the lane uh, to save everyone time and money and grief and move forward with the development that 
everyone's happy with for a landmark development in the downtown. But we'd also like to encourage the town to bring forward a new zoning standard for parking in the downtown and to use this project as an example of the standard that other developers in the downtown need to meet. Uh, that's a separate task, uh, but we'd encourage council to consider taking those steps. Uh, it would, I think it'd be a good idea for everyone going forward. So those are my comments. Thank you. Any further council, council comments? Councilor Frank? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, in, in light of uh, uh, my asks, and uh, Mr. DeSantis has met all of my asks, I know we're not, we, we shouldn't be fighting our own zoning bylaws, so I will, I will leave the restaurant piece alone for now, but even though it would be nice to get some extra restaurant spaces, but basically you've met my, my wish list, and I will definitely move for this going forward. So uh, I just, on the site plans things, uh, just some considerations. There's some issues with the cul-de-sac. I'm, I'm assuming that this landmark building, which is a key word, which is missing out of this document here, which you just put together, uh, that it will blend in with the downtown and have a nice facade similar to Harmony Jewelers, that type of building. Um, and, and you will consider the setbacks as we've, as, we've, as we've discussed before, but that'll come into the site plan part. Uh, I guess some comments for staff, <clears throat> if I don't mind, it's just my concerns. Uh, because this particular development will probably be happening at the same time as the downtown water main replacement, I hopefully will have a, a plan in place as a town and with the developer to work around that because it's going to be pandemonium down there. So uh, I think I think we've kind of forgotten that it's going to be happening around the same time. Um, and I think we need to do, a, definitely as Mr. Lance just mentioned, we should definitely do a study and come up with a parking, some kind of a parking um, standard for downtown it, because it's, it's going to be more and more developed and parking is going to be more of a premium downtown. So we need to definitely look at that. So thank you for this and I'll vote for it. Thank you, Council Frick. Uh, any further questions from Council? Uh, Mayor Jordan? Councilor Bothell. When you have time. Yeah. Go ahead, Councilor Bothell. Okay, thank you. I just two things. Um, is, the, is the agreement going to ever be made public? Will the public be able to see the details of the agreement that we presented and, uh, and the OPA and ZBA that are in it? That's, uh, that's my main question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bothwell. You can get your answer now. Yeah, um, through you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, and and um, Mr. Doherty can um, add any comments as he wishes, but we, we have nothing in that settlement agreement that is confidential in the sense that after it's signed, there's no reason why the public couldn't read it. They may not want to read it. It's very long and full of legalese, and quite frankly, I don't even want to read it. But the reality is it's out there. It can be read, and... Um, yeah, it's nothing to hide. Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, I concur with those comments that uh, once uh, approved, it would be uh, capable of being uh, made a public document. Great, thank you very much. That's good to hear. Councillor Sharp. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Jordan. Um, 
So I can see that we're getting a lot closer here, all right? And um, one of the things that I've been asking that we haven't moved down yet is the, uh, is the restaurant parking. And I wonder if, if you guys could find it within you to increase the restaurant even to 20 spaces. We could pass this tonight. Like we, we've we've moved a lot. We've we've all made some concessions, and uh, but th th I feel like that's one thing that we haven't made enough attention to. It would put it at around forty-five percent of the front of the house or something. Twenty spaces versus seventeen. I mean, and we might, so. No, okay. I want my chance to come back. I wasn't supposed to speak anymore, but apparently uh, we do have an answer to that question. And what we could do is set a minimum of 1,000 square feet of public floor area. So if Mr. DeSantis, instead of building the 87, units builds 84 units there's three extra parking spots which would count three times 4.5 another 120 square feet 150 square feet of restaurant space so you know keep in mind zoning sets minimum requirements and you have to meet this one this one this one and this one and it's all dependent on the number of units and the floor space of the retail and the floor space of the restaurant. So it's going to be a dynamic process if we set a minimum floor area of 1,000 square feet. That at least assures council the restaurant will be this big, and it could even be bigger if we do have surplus parking. The other option would be set it as a cap, and if we do have surplus parking, we'd have to come in for a minor variance but the problem with that, of course, is it just opens everything up again, and we may as well do it now by setting it as a minimum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arians. Uh, Councillor Sharp, you have further questions or comments? Sorry, I wasn't finished. I just uh, give him the podium to, to answer that question. So um, the minimum, right? We're uh, we're headed in the right direction, but. Uh, so three, three more parking spaces, right? It's 20 spaces total for the restaurant use. That would be 112 square meters of restaurant front of house. Um, would, would you consider uh, 85 units, not 87 units? Would you consider agreeing to that in the bylaw phase? Not, not in the bylaw phase. When we come to site plan, we will do that. So I'd like, to, I'd like to vote for this. I'd like this to be a unanimous decision, but, but I want I want some more move on the park. You, you haven't moved at all on the restaurant parking. It's like 17 spots, but we haven't even... Give me something here, like... I think I did what was asked of him, the best we can, with respect to the And again, if we go to the market, chances are if Okay, so well, I have one other question then, thank you. Um, will the restaurant be owned by the restaurateur or will it be owned, is it for sale or is it for lease? Well, it, it, it is a commercial space, it's a condo unit, and again, depending on the market conditions, I may be the landlord and rent it out, or I may sell the space okay. to a user. So someone could buy it, but they won't necessarily? Okay. Um, the other question I have is for staff. Um, Duran Avenue is kind of an older street, and um, 
Would there be any improvements done to Duran Avenue, like since it's the access for these 87 units? And I mean, I don't know how that reflects on the development, but what happens to Duran Avenue? Yeah, thank you for your question, uh, Councillor Sharp. Um, when we get to the site plan stage, we will uh, look at details like where the services are gonna go, uh, what improvements need to be made to the existing infrastructure. And uh, we'll also look at things like cost sharing as Mr. DeSantis has identified. So this is something uh, that we look at diligently and, uh, and in more detail through the site plan uh, review process. Thank you, uh, Walter, for clarifying that. Uh, uh, Councillor Barty. Thank you. So I'm just going to ask you again uh, what I asked you in private, I'll ask you in public. Can you increase your restaurant parking? Um, I mean, when, you, when you're talking, I don't want to say fictitious numbers, but um, flexible numbers. You know, you said 87 max, but we could, you know, we might do less, we might do this. Um, you know, we have some flexibility. So, why, if you know, we're just sort of picking numbers, why not just pick 84, give us the three parking, extra parking spots, and then we can all go away happy. Because right now, I'm not entirely happy. So, and, and I think, I mean, I, I have to do my due diligence for, for the residents and I'm very conflicted. So if you could show that movement, um, I could move from my position of no to yes. Thank you. Councillor Ritchie. Um, I think one of the things we heard though that I really liked uh, was the minimum squ uh, square footage on the commercial space. So if uh, we all know that the maximum is 87 units, but if for whatever reason um, the units have been get brought down due to the market to 82, that would create additional parking spaces. And I think that's a, a worthwhile cause to look at those parking spaces to actually increase the um, the uh, foot space for public in the restaurant. I, I really like to see that into the to the agreement. If if my colleagues would agree to that, I don't know if we can uh, if we can agree like if we can how we can do that. I don't know if we need to take a two minute recess, whatever the case is. But I think it's very uh, very doable. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Any other comments from council? Uh, seeing that, I, I have a couple comments. Uh, I just, I just want to commend um, the the Santos team for actually uh, working with us, and I want to commend the council for moving forward um, on this negotiation. Um, I th I, as I said, I think we're almost there. Uh, I think this is a project that um, that kind of spans between the old council and the new council. And a lot of the things that the new council is anguishing over uh, is what we kind of inherited from uh, the previous council. Uh, whether that be official plan, zoning, zoning uh, bylaws, and again, with the region, um, with their uh, new efficient official plan moving forward, this is the time where we'll be able to look at the town of Grimsby's official plan, and I really think that we need to update it and and really tie it up and uh, and make it so it, it, it's a better working document for everyone, so uh, we can move forward and we can move forward with a downtown that is going to be historic but vibrant, and this is certainly the the keystone of of our downtown right now. Um, I think uh, we can have a building that we can all be proud of 
Uh, are there too many units for some people? I would think so, but we need to get a, a building that, that we can all be proud of. Uh, we're going to intensify the area, yes. Uh, we're going to do that with working with uh, traffic patterns on Main Street. Uh, and I really think that, that we as a council, we've certainly done our due diligence on this project and been very passionate about this project. And none of us here are anti-development in the slightest, but we, we love our town and we really want to get the best for our town. And sometimes the best is a, a compromise and uh, we're up against numbers that both the province and our official plan want and the developers come up with those numbers. So we're really in a position here where, where the developer has done a lot. Would we like our official plan to be different so we, we have more control? Absolutely. But I think where we're at right now is that, that it's something that this has gone on so long. I think we've solved the uh, laneway potentially with uh, this resolution. And I really think that we, we, we should be proud that that we have worked it this far passionately and uh, that we are so close right now. So um, with that, uh, I'll just uh, end. Clerk will have a resolution or are we gonna go for another recess or I'm kind of lost at where we're at. Thank you. We're just gonna have uh, probably a five minute recess just to write the resolution. like to call the meeting um, back again. I'll get right with the resolution. Moved by Councillor Frank, second by Councillor Vardy. Now therefore be it resolved that the town directs their legal counsel, Galling WLG, to enter into the following settlement agreement. One, master settlement agreement. Two, court minutes of settlement. Three, bronze settlement agreement and four ALPAP minutes of settlement, including amending these settlement agreements and the enclosures thereto as may be required to the satisfaction of legal counsel as well as the chief administration officer and or to the director of planning, building and bylaw. 
one, to address the absence of Irene Braun's consent and to continue to negotiate with Irene Braun's to obtain her consent, failing, to wit failing which to obtain the court orders contemplated pursuant to the master settlement agreement and the court minutes of settlement, to extend the date for the town to pass a bylaw or resolution confirming or approving the agreements from August 31st, 2020 to October 30th, 2020, to address the following changes to the revised scheme proposed by Homes by DeSantis Downtown Incorporated as set forth in Schedule A attached hereto, and that the town directs the mayor and the clerk to enter into the following documents. One, acknowledgement and direction with respect to the easements in land titles. Two, document general to register the court order vesting title to parts one and two of the laneway in the town and three, option agreement. And that the town directs the mayor to swear and sign the following documents. One, land transfer tax affidavit with respect to the option agreement. Two, land tax transfer tax affidavit with respect to the easement in registry and three land transfer tax affidavit with respect to vesting title <coughs> to parts one and two of the laneway in the town. All right, and it's a recorded vote. Councillor Bothwell. I always go first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Bothwell is yes. Councillor Dunstall. Yes. Councillor Dunstall is yes. Councillor Frake. Yes. Councillor Frake is yes. Councillor Cadwell. Yes. Councillor Cadwell is yes. Councillor Ritchie. Yes. Councillor Ritchie is yes. Councillor Sharp. Yes. Councillor Sharp is yes. Councillor Vane. Yes. Councillor Vane is yes. Councillor Vardy. Yes. Councillor Vardy is yes, and myself, I mean yes, so that is carried unanimously. Good job, Councillor. Up next, we need uh, mover and seconder to um, give lead to, uh, for the bylaws. Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Sharp. Moved by Councillor Ritchie, second by Councillor Sharp. Resolved that leave be given to introduce bylaw number 20-65 as amended and 20-67 inclusive and that same be read a first time. All in favor? The two remotes? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's carried. Need a mover and seconder for second and third reading. Councillor Cadwell and Councillor Ritchie. Moved by Councillor Cadwell, second by Councillor Ritchie. Resolve that leave be given to introduce bylaw number 20-65 as amended and 20-67 inclusive. Read a first time, now be read a second and third time and finally passed and that the mayor and town clerk do sign and seal the same and any rule of council to the contrary notwithstanding. All in favor? Remote? Yes. That's carried. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned.